Okay, are we ready okay. to? Yeah, and uh, first of all, I will say some words about you, and then we can start. <laughs> also, on, at the very beginning, okay. you can you can say a few words about you because I know exactly that you have great experience in business administration and uh, marketing management. So it will be great our students to speak with you today. Great. So, dear students, maybe we will start. Let me introduce our instructor, our lecturer today. Uh, this is, uh, he is Dr. Simon Abwata, Dean of School of Business, uh, Doctor of Philosophy in Business Administration and Management at Africa Nazarene University and Kenya Methodist University at Nairobi, Kenya. So we are very glad to see this uh, excellent uh, lecture at our university today. And uh, I think that you will have uh, very interesting information today. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Protzen. Um, in my, anytime I, I have a, a lecture, I like to make it very interactive. And I'm hoping that um, uh, students or, or anyone uh, on board is going to uh, get comfortable with my pronunciation. I know uh, uh, well. This is part of the of the deal. You you know uh, we come from different parts of the world and uh, different uh, uh, abilities to communicate. Uh, so I hope uh, you're going to. Uh, be comfortable with my uh, expressions and my pronunciation. If you do not get uh, to understand any parts of whatever I'm saying, please uh, 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 post a chat. I'll be able to see uh, whatever you're saying. So even as I continue to present, I'll be reading uh, the chats. So as I've indicated, I would like this to be a very, very interactive uh, session. I like to be interrupted at any point of my uh, discussion. Okay, thank you for that. And don't worry about your pronunciation. You, has, you have great English. Okay. <laughs> Actually, it's okay, interesting to you. listen to people with different pronunciations. Okay, thank you. I really thank like you. it. That is encouraging, Sophia. Thank you, thank you. Actually, I'm more used to this kind of access that our teachers has. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. So, I'm going to share my presentation. How much time again do I have again? Uh, it will be around 45 minutes. About 45 minutes. Yeah. So with you. 45 minutes, I want to ensure that I create, um, I, I, I start something and I build it up and I create something that will remain in your mind for the rest of your, uh, your academic life and for the rest of your professional life. That will be my goal within 45 minutes. I'm really, really hopeful that I will be able to deliver. So I share my screen kindly. Yeah, now we can see. So in total, 45 minutes for a presentation and around 10, 15 minutes for question and uh, answer. So if you want to combine them, so in total, you will have uh, one hour. Okay. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So here we go. Uh, uh, you, you have already uh, gotten my introduction, so I wouldn't want to go uh, through that again. I'm going to be talking about research conceptualization. But, um, well, um, just to give you an understanding of, of my interest in research, I have authored a book, uh, uh, Academic Research Writing, The Logical Sequence. Uh, so just to get to know about it. The very interesting thing is that this book, you will not be able to find it online for certain reasons, but the book is, is, is out there and it's available. Um, 
but I want to give a subtitle. What exactly am I talking about when I talk about research conceptualization? How does a researcher see the world? A researcher does not just see the world the way any other person sees the world. How does a researcher see the world? That will be my goal at the end of this presentation. I would like to make you understand how a researcher sees the world. Now, as my introduction, remember to interrupt me at any point. What is conceptualization in research? So I've underlined some words in my explanation of what conceptualization in research is all about. Conceptualization is a process of not only selecting a research topic, but also formulating a defensible and researchable problem to the variables of the research, generating a research, I mean research objectives and operationalizing the study. The underlined words are uh, research topic, research problem, uh, research objectives, and operationalizing. So I want to go straight into these words. I know you do not understand by the end of this slide. I know you do not probably understand what these items uh, are about. So I'm going into them. Research topic. Please look at the research topic as the main subject, the issue that the researcher is interested in when conducting research. If you read a bit wider, you will realize that research topic is largely uh, a, a, a brief summary, the shortest summary of what the problem is. But what is the problem now? It is a statement about an area of concern, a condition to be improved, the difficulty to be eliminated, the troubling question that exists in scholarly literature, in theory or in practice, that points to the need for meaningful understanding and deliberate investigation. Now, underline also the words, a condition to be improved, an area of concern. So, a researcher will want to see his world from the angle of research problems. What is it that calls for an intervention, for improvement? Um, but then not all not all problems are researchable. There are problems which are not researchable. When is a problem researchable? A researchable problem is a problem against which data or information can be found through a research exercise. Now, I know still we are not very, very comfortable with every term that we're talking about, but I want to go back to the beginning of this uh, slide. A research topic is the main issue, the main subject that the research, the entire research is about. A research problem, underline the words, a condition to be improved. And then researchable problem is a problem against which we can get data. Not all research problems, I mean, not all problems can we get data or information about. For example, if you want today to find out about something that is happening just right now in a certain part of the world, it is, it is almost impossible for you to get information about what is happening, uh, say, in, in, in my next door neighbor, you know, neighbor's house. You are very far away. So 
a researchable problem is that against which data or information can be uh, retrieved. Now, I want to move on and I want you to work with me because uh, at the end of the day, uh, I want to ensure that I create uh, something that will stick in your mind as you move into your academic and even professional life. Uh, I want to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, introduce something called a conceptual framework. What is a conceptual framework? A researcher thinks through variables and how they relate and a presentation of what variables that, that are in the study and how they relate. That schematic presentation is what we are talking about as a conceptual framework. Now, I'm going back a bit. I'm going back a bit. Please take note of the three items that are in this, on this slide. Research topic, research problem, researchable problem, and then let's move on conceptual framework. Conceptual framework introduces the word variables, but I have not spoken about variables. I'm going to be talking about variables as we move on. But a presentation of variables, that is what a conceptual framework is, a schematic presentation of variables. Um, when we talk about variables here, we are talking about uh, characteristics. A variable is a characteristic of an entity. Now, an entity is just about anything that can be called a thing. That's an entity. A variable is a characteristic of that thing. For example, I'm holding a phone here. I'm holding a phone. This phone is an entity in research, but we can draw variables about this phone color of the phone, ability of this phone, memory capacity of the phone, all those are items about, uh, or, or, or characteristics about this phone. So a conceptual framework is a schematic presentation of variables of a study. I want to talk about objectives. Here, I'm just defining certain terms that we are going to be using as we move on. Research objectives. Research objectives break down the research topic to address the purpose of investigation. They break down the research topic to address the purpose of investigation. So you have a research topic but once you break it down, you have objectives. Now, I want to bring the last term, operationalization. Now, when you see the term operationalization, please remember uh, to operationalize in research is to make it work. To operationalize is to make it work. But in actual sense of research, when you have a variable, determination of sub-variables against that variable is what we call operationalization. So also we refer to the sub-variables as indicators. Up to that point, I want to be sure as to whether I am talking to myself or I'm making sense. Mm. Can I ask something? Can you provide examples for conceptual framework and for operation, operationalization of research variables? Okay. Now, let me give you an example of a conceptual framework. And uh, uh, let me see if I, I could just simply uh, go online. I'm not sure you, if you're able to see my screen. Are you seeing my screen wherever I am right now? No, 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 no. You just need to restart your screen sharing and put like a Google uh, here, there. Yeah, Sorry. we can see only uh, your uh, PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. You can see only my PowerPoint presentation. So I'll stop 
my presentation. I'll stop my share and I just want to go to, um, let me just go to conceptual framework and let me look for something that, uh, no, in fact, let me make a different, uh, uh, a different uh, approach. Sorry, um, making a different approach. You can see my screen once again. It is PowerPoint yes. presentation again. PowerPoint presentation. Now, uh, I've just decided to go because I had, um, there's a way I'd ordered my, my presentation. This is an example of a conceptual framework. That's an example of a conceptual framework. Can you see it? I've just seen that. Sorry. Yes, we saw it. <laughs> yeah, Can you yep, see it? Yeah, we see. That is a conceptual framework. Uh, to explain what, um, to explain what operationalization is, uh, when you have a variable, for example, uh, let's 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 talk about variables a bit. Uh, so that I can answer that question, a question that was asked by, I think, uh, uh, Ivana. Is that yeah. Ivana? Uh, a variable could include, for example, um, population of a country. Population of a country, that's a variable. But we could draw some variables about population of a country. So the entity is a country. The variable is population of a country. But there are sub variables that could be drawn or associated to the population of a country. What can we attribute to a population of a country? For example, growth of that population is a sub variable. It's an indicator of population of a country. Am I making sense to you, Ivana? Yep. Thank you so much. Any other question? So basically, a variable, it is something that can be changed in the future. Thank you. Not even in the future. It yeah, changes. So, yeah, okay, I got it. It changes. Even right now, it could be changing, including height, shape, mm -hmm. color. Yeah, okay. That is a variable. I'd like to move on because I'll be coming back to touch on that uh, as we move on. Now, I have a question for you. Uh, from what you've had, I've mentioned about a research topic and a research problem. Which one do you think comes first? Is it um, a research topic or a research I think, problem? I think research problem because sometimes problem calls topics, calls the creation of the topics. Thank you. Now, please note, many uh, academicians or many students, well, I, I teach uh, doctoral students, and uh, sometimes, uh, uh, well, I know right now I need to bring it down, down so that we can agree, we can understand each other, absolutely. But the point is, uh, many scholars think of research as in like it begins from the topic. Please note, research begins from the research problem. So without a research problem, there is no topic. I want to move on. Uh, I'm presenting a flowchart, but I'm interested in conceptualization. So in order for us to conceptualize a research, only the upper part of this flowchart is what interests the researcher. And I'm talking about a research problem, specification and operationalization of variables, title formulation, development of conceptual framework, and designing objectives. That is largely what the researcher does when they are conceptualizing their study. 
I hope that is clear. So I'm moving to the next part. And as those items are happening, please remember literature review runs throughout the research. Even when thinking about the problem, you need to be reviewing literature. So literature review runs from beginning to the end of the study, but conceptualization takes place only, you know, it, it covers the first part of the research process. So we are talking about uh, uh, problem identification, specification or operationalization of the variables, and then title formulation or the topic formulation, if you like, and then conceptual framework building. After that, we develop the, con uh, the, the objectives, the specific objectives of the study. So I'll be talking about that and as, as, as we move on. So research problem, I want to begin there. Research problem. What is a research problem? A research problem, we have given the definition earlier on, but there are three items that are key, very, very key, in terms of holding a research problem. Number one, the ideal state. Ideal state is that perfect state. That perfect state. Uh, then there is a reality situation. That is where the problem lies. There is no way I will understand the existence of a problem if you don't tell me this is the ideal, but this is the reality. Um, let me give you a better still example. This is the ideal. It is white colored. But what is the reality? It is black. That contrast, once created, we are able to see the problem. We are creating a contrast so that a problem could be seen. But a problem does not exist unless there are consequences in the midterm and in the long run. If I have a headache right now, that is not enough for me to carry out a study. But if my headache is likely to cause a problem that sustains in the midterm and in the long run, maybe five years, maybe 10 years, maybe 15 years, maybe 20 years in the future, then that is enough for it to be a research problem. Um, let me ask if anyone is not getting that concept. Is there anyone with a question up to that point? Again? I have a question again. Please ask again. Sorry, uh, do you consider um, uh, a problem um, if, for example, it's not necessarily? Like it's an idea for a startup, but it, it has no consequence. Maybe the consequence will be that somebody else gonna open this startup but it doesn't really make change in the world. Do we concern it as um, research problem or not? Thank you, thank you so much. That's a very good question. And actually it, it takes me to another part of my presentation. Please remember, in research we say, you must have a research problem for you to carry out a research. But please remember, in business, there are times we look for opportunities. There's actually no problem, but we want to carry out a study to establish existence of an opportunity. Thank you. Then may, that- May I also ask a question? That, that, that opportunity that has not been exploited is considered a problem. I see someone's mic is on. Uh, yes, may I also ask a, another question? Can you hear me? Please, please go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I see at the very bottom of this slide, it has the letters N and B. Uh, what does that stand for? Oh, oh sorry about that. That's a, like a not, a not. N, B, not a better or something like that. Sorry. Uh, it is uh, Italian or something, but we use it. Uh, we commonly use That's it. That's all right. Uh, 
Sorry about that. It's, a, it's just a not. No, thank you. Thank you for explaining. An unexploited business opportunity is a problem. So that note there answers Ivana's question. Okay. Thank you so much. I'd like to move on again. Remember, we are working within 40 minutes. I don't know how much time we have left. Research topic. We've just addressed a problem. Now we are talking about a research topic. What are the hallmarks of a research topic? What are the key items that must appear on a research topic? Number one, variables. We said a variable is a characteristic that changes and can be measured. A variable is a characteristic that changes and can be measured. So I like what uh, uh, Light has had uh, indicated earlier. However, I'm just adding something to it. A variable has also a measurable quality to it. We can measure color of this phone. We can measure shape of this glass. We can measure the size of this container. There is a container here. We can measure the size, we can measure shape. In research, you can measure shape, you can also measure color. Okay? You don't just measure weight and length. Okay? Yeah, we got it. Thank you. I'm moving to the second point, target population. Please understand target population to be the entire population of interest to the researcher. When, for example, you've heard that there is, uh, oh, there is Corona right now, COVID-19, it's hitting us left, right. Uh, the entire population that you want to study how Corona is affecting, that entire population is your target population. Then the study population, you will not collect data from the entire target population. You will be thinking about the entire target population, but you will not collect data from it. You will only collect data from the study population. So for example, if you went to a certain village somewhere to collect data from, or a certain town, that village forms your study population. However, the findings of your, uh, of your study from that village could be generalizable to a larger population. I have if a that, question about that. Yes. So how do you know that your study population is actually a good representation of the target population? Because from statistics, I know that if you don't pick a wide enough population or if that population maybe has some specific characteristics that aren't shared by the entire target population, this could give like a skewed reading. Thank you. Whenever you collect um, data from a study population, it must be representative of the entire population or the target population. Let me give you a very simple example. If today I felt a bit unwell and I went to a doctor and the doctor uh, uh, deci decided that uh, I need to carry out some tests. So I will go to the lab, laboratory, and uh, uh, I will have to uh, probably, uh, th they will have to prick my finger, probably this little finger to get blood. Once they get blood from this uh, 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 small finger, they'll be testing, say, for, uh, for, 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 for uh, um, uh, we are African uh, countries here, we have a lot of malaria. So we are testing for malaria. So the, the, the lab technician pricks my finger, gets some blood sample, and tests for malaria. Uh, 
they do not get blood from another person, but from the person they want to test. Because the blood from my finger will be representative of what happens in my entire body. Am I making sense? That is what representation is about. Uh, I and actually, I hope I've answered your question. After, after your explanation, I understood that I didn't get the topic. So, like, uh, can, you, can you give, like, a small example of the population? Because before this, I saw that, okay, we to make a research, we need to, like, collect the data from the, like, broad number of people. But uh, after your uh, example with the blood, I... <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe Dr. Simon means that uh, research can be done as we can take 10 people. And statistically, uh, if we do research on 10 of them, that will represent 100 of them. But it's only statistically. Exactly. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Ilea. I don't know if uh, Ilea... It's fine. Ilea or something. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, please note... If you want to find out how, say, teaching methodology affects academic performance within, say, private universities in, uh, in uh, Ukraine, we want to find out how teaching methodology affects academic performance among private universities in Ukraine. We need to ensure that we get a sample from at least a few private universities only in a country called Ukraine. Okay. But I... once we collect this data, and it is, we have collected data from universities that represent what we are interested in, the entire population. What is our entire population? Private universities in Ukraine. But what forms our study population? A few selected private universities in Ukraine. So once we get the findings, the findings are applicable to the entire population which is all private universities in Ukraine. I hope I've made sense. I would like to move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Because like okay. the translation, the most popular translation of the word population uh, like mislead me a, a little bit. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, no problem. In case you have a question, please feel free to ask me at any point. Now, how does a problem feature in the topic? In order to answer this question, I'll take you back to another slide. I'll take you back to this uh, slide here. Research topic. Once again, what are the hallmarks? What are the items that form the research topic? The variables, the target population, and the study population. Now, what I would like to suggest, remember, I've used a uh, I've, I've used an example of a topic, effects of teaching methodology on academic performance among private universities in Ukraine. I want to use that as my example. Effects of teaching methodology on academic performance among private universities in Ukraine. So there are three things there. Look at this. We were talking about variables, target population, study population. And in the topic that I'm presenting here, I'm talking about effects of teaching methodology on academic performance among private universities in Ukraine. What am I lacking among these three items that form the hallmarks of research topic? I'm lacking something. Is there someone who could figure it out? My topic reads, effects of teaching methodology on academic performance among private universities in Ukraine. I'm missing something. What is that?
Anyone who, who is able to see? Ivana? Is it the study population? Thank you. I'm missing study population. So if I added a case, a case of selected private universities in Kyiv, for example, I'm just giving that as an example, then that case would form my study population. So there are some studies which will not have a study population, especially if the target population and study population are one and the same. A good example, in a country where I am, this is Kenya, we have probably only one private, uh, one Islamic university, one Islamic university. So if I was to study effects of teaching methodology on academic performance, among Islamic universities in Kenya, I cannot say a case of, say, Umma University, which is the only Islamic university. Because if my target population and study population are one and the same thing, I do not need to separate them. So we will have only three items. But I want for you to see that in the topic that I presented, that example, effects of teaching methodology on academic performance among private universities in Ukraine, we have a variable teaching methodology, another variable academic performance, a target population which is Students. private universities in Ukraine. Ukraine. I'm moving on. How does a problem feature in the research topic? This is how a problem features in the research topic. Uh, and I want to use a very crazy example. Uh, I am sick. I'm feeling unwell. And uh, I go to a doctor and uh, they prescribe some medication. Oh, they decide to give me an injection. There is the injection here. There is this injection. This is the injection. And here is the patient. Here is the injection and here is the patient. Who depends on the other? Is it the injection that depends on the patient? Or is it the patient that depends on the injection? It's a very basic question. The patient is unwell. Is unwell. Uh, injection depends on what the disease or um, patient has. Is it? I, I feel probably you have twisted the it. Patient's or something. life depends on injection. Thank yes. you. For the patient to get better, they depend on the injection. So the patient is dependent and the injection is independent. So in variables, the dependent variable is in most cases where the problem lies. The problem lies in the dependent variable. So for example, in what we had said earlier, effects of teaching methodology that is independent on academic performance that is dependent. Where is the problem? The problem is not teaching methodology. The problem is academic performance. But where is the intervention coming from? Independent. I'm not sure whether I am confusing you with this independent, dependent, independent, dependent. Are we communicating? Um, sorry to interrupt, but for me, like uh, there wasn't an injection if there wasn't uh, a demand. So yes. that's why for me, injection uh, is dependent uh, to, uh, to the person who is sick. Because uh, people created injection to, um, to this person 
So there wasn't an injection. So injection is dependent. That's why it's a bit confusing to me. Yeah, I, I, I saw it in the same way. That's why I asked. So we have okay. the same misunderstandings. Let me, with it, one. Let, let me ask it in a different way. Here is a patient. What is, what is at the heart of the doctor? Does the doctor hold this injection? Is, is the injection more important than the patient or the patient more important than the injection? The answer patient will be. is more important. The patient is more important to the doctor. Even if this injection does not work on the patient, the doctor will do away with that injection and try something else. The patient... Can I uh, try to... patient depends on this intervention, the injection. The recovery of the patient depends on the injection. So the problem lies in the dependent side of the equation. Are you essentially saying that we're looking for which side of the equation, which variable we are looking to change? Yes. Which variable are we looking to change? We are changing the independent variable. Okay, it makes sense. We are manipulating sense. the independent variable. Okay, we are manipulating the independent variable. The independent variable is the injection itself. So I'd like that to be very clear. We have two variables in a study. We have the dependent and the independent. We manipulate the independent variable and we see the results on the dependent variable, which is where our focus is. So a researcher focuses on the dependent variable, just like a doctor focuses on the patient. Okay, I think it's clear. Thank you. I would like to move on. Now, besides the fact that the dependent variable, that is where the researcher focuses on, the researcher also focuses on the target population and not the study population. So in the earlier example where uh, we got blood from my little finger to test for malaria, the problem is not in the finger. The problem is actually existing in my entire body. Where the target population is my entire body. So we get blood from this finger by pricking and we test and we realize this malaria. Malaria is not in my finger, it is in my entire body. In the same, same way, if we were to test to see how teaching methodology affects academic performance among private universities in Ukraine, then the problem exists in the target population in the entire set of private universities. So we are only getting a sample that is representative of the entire target. And then variable, and at the same time, the problem lies in the target population. I hope that is clear. I would like to move to the next slide. Any question? Oh. Mm, no. <laughs> I would like to ensure that if you're not getting me, make sure you ask your question. Yeah, oh, okay. It's fine. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, our classes are usually very interactive. We talk and we even laugh and uh, play around and uh, that's how we communicate. So thank you. Let me move on. Uh, we've spoken about variables already, but I was planning to talk about variables at this point. But just to recap a variable, uh, a researcher sees their world through variables. Remember, I also said that the researcher sees their world from the problems. They also see the world from variables. A variable, I said earlier on, is a characteristic of an entity that varies and can be measured. So, 
population of Ukraine can vary and we can measure it. So it passes perfectly for um, a variable. I have a question for Sophia. Sophia. Yeah. Is Sophia a variable? Um, I guess yes. I think no. Like it depends on the from which side. It's like, is a Sophia virus? Like, I think that uh, certain aspects of Sophia are variables, but this yeah. is, uh, as a as a being is not variable. Yes. I like what you're saying, Maxim. For I example, like what yeah, the height of Sophia is variable, but the entire Sophia is not. Now, Sophia, let's go through the definition. The, in, the definition a variable is a characteristic of an entity that varies and can be measured. Uh, it is a characteristic. Sophia, are you a, char a characteristic? No. Oh. She's so, a set of characteristics. You are not a characteristic, but you have characteristic. Yes, of course. Another thing, uh, another thing that I would like to add is uh, uh, Sophia is actually an entity. Yes. She is uh, the entity itself about which we can draw variables. Ukraine is not a variable. Ukraine is not a variable. It's an entity about which variables can be attrib attributed. For example, population, age distribution, and education levels. I want to talk about two main variables. Already I mentioned about this earlier, and largely it's because of the questions that came. The independent variable, we have many variables. We have the independent variable. Independent variables are also called, uh, referred to as cause or predictor or antecedents, uh, but we have the dependent variables. I've already spoken about dependent and independent. Uh, dependent variable is also referred to as the effect, the outcome, or the consequence. Uh, just so you know, uh, these terms are used in specific ways. If a researcher refers to the independent variable as a cause, they refer to the dependent variable as the effect. If they refer to the independent variable as a predictor, they refer to the dependent variable as the outcome. You don't mix those terms. And if you refer to the independent variable as the antecedent, then you refer to the dependent variable as the consequence. So you'll find a study, uh, the antecedents and consequences of something. You will not find a study like uh, uh, that states, say, the predictors and the consequences. It doesn't go like that. So just so you know. And then we have other variables like the moderator variable, the intervening variables, and confounding variables. Please take time to read about those. But I'm moving towards the end of my presentation. Conceptual framework. What is a conceptual framework? We say that a conceptual framework is a schematic presentation of the variables. A schematic presentation of the variables and the relationships. But let's now go deeper, slightly deeper. The independent variable from the topic is broken down as supported by the multiple linear regression model to end up with sub-variables that end up on the conceptual framework. That's the mouthful. I'll make sure you understand it. That's my promise. Second point, the conceptual framework therefore ends up with one dependent variable and multiple independent variables. I want to go back to my first point the independent variable from the topic is broken down as supported uh, 
ahead by the multiple linear regression model. You've seen a term there, multiple linear regression model. I am going to present that model in the next slide, and I'm not interested in that model except the x's and the y's. So I'm going back again to this other slide. Under this slide, we have said, under the conceptual framework, the independent variable from the topic is broken down as supported by the multiple linear regression model. There is what we refer to as the multiple linear regression model. The multiple linear regression model has the x's and the y's where x represents the independent variables and y represents the dependent variable. Now, this is what I would like for you to see in the next slide. y is equal to that b naught, better not, b1x1, b2x2, bkxk, plus the error term. Please don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Please note that the multiple linear regression model has only one y. Are you noticing that? It has only one y. I can see uh, Lighters is holding their head like this. Meaning this one now, what is happening here? Ilea is also Ilea is also holding their head, meaning this thing is real tough. No, it's not tough at all. What I would like for you to know is I'm sure you'll be handling the multiple linear regression model in statistics. I am not going into it. I am not interested in going into it. I'm only interested in one thing, that the multiple linear regression model presents only one y and many x's. Remember, y represents the dependent variable and x's are the independent variables. Which ones are more? The independent variables are more than the dependent variable. That's all that I'm interested in. That the dependent variable is one and the independent variables are, va are many. They can be one, they, they, could, they could be two, they could be three, they could be four, depending on the study. And can I ask a question? So, Please and, ask your question. Yeah, uh, B letter is something that can affect variable to change, okay. yeah? Am I right? Yes, E represents the error term. Please note, lighters, I am, I am not going to talk about E. I'm not going to talk about those K's and the I's. I'm only interested in the Y's and the X's. Mm -hmm. Okay. For this presentation, I'm only interested in the Y's and the X's. How many Y's are you seeing, Lighters? Mm, I can see only one. Thank you. And how many X's are you seeing? Uh, there are many. Here you can see yeah, two. It, and actually BKXK means we can have as many as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. We can have as many as possible. Now, let's go back to the patients. If you have corona, if you're tested, you you've tested positive for corona today, the problem is your dependent variable, the existence of your corona in you. That is the dependent. That is, that is where the problem lies. How yes, many interventions do we need to treat corona or to control the effects of corona? Chances are if someone is vomiting, we will need something for vomiting. We will need something probably to control um, the fever. That's another intervention. Well, they usually just prescribe the vitamins. They could prescribe the vitamins, but if, for example, you are having vomiting, they will not give you something for vomiting. <clears throat> no, they will, they will. They will. Now, what I'll say, the problem will always be one, but the interventions will be many. In other words, the why 
variable, which is the dependent variable, will always be how many? One. One. But my my corona the excess positive. will be many. That is all I want for you to know from this slide. So for those of you who started getting stressed when you saw this uh, uh, formula here, then please note that we are done. We are done. I'm moving and now relating what we have seen on this slide with the next slide, which is a presentation of the conceptual framework. Under this conceptual framework, we have one, this is just an example, an example of a conceptual framework. We have one dependent variable and many independent variables. That is how the researcher seeks to solve the problem. The problem is self-efficacy judgment. But how many interventions? One, performance accomplishments. Two, vicarious experience. Three, verbal persuasions. Four, emotional states. I'm moving to the end of my presentation. Operationalization of variables. I'd already spoken about this. We are operationalizing variables when we add indicators to them. If our variable was strategy formulation, then indicators may include mission and vision statement formulation, uh, 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 strategy formulation, it could be <clears throat> analysis, it could be resource analysis uh, or, or something like that, or implementation and planning, because these are subsets. So anytime you think about a variable, for example, economic development, Operationalizing economic development, you will need to have items that will be used to measure economic development. How do we measure economic development? That's just my last uh, question. By statistics. How do we measure economic development? By statistics, for example. I yes. mean, we can analyze the current development and uh, understanding it, we can produce uh, of the static of how it's gonna get if everything will be okay um, like minus risks we can pro uh, produce the statistics which will so show how they will be in three two years thank you thank you so much but we have other measures which are very simple measures of economic development Maybe we could measure uh, 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 trade international trade uh, we could we could measure GDP. We could measure GNP, GDP, gross domestic product, GNP. Uh, uh, you know those items? Yeah, yeah, gross domestic product and gross national product. Gross national product, GNP. You could use those items to measure economic development. So, if our variable was economic development, our indicators will be those. Is this my, ah, I have two slides, just two slides. Um, once you have a conceptual framework, please note, once you have a conceptual framework like this, remember you have a topic and you have a conceptual framework, then you're able to generate objectives of a study. This is just an example, but I would like for you to know if, for example, our study, generated this conceptual framework, then look at the very first one. The first one is performance, accomplishment, and self-efficacy judgment. It features on the first example to assess the influence of performance accomplishments on self-efficacy judgment. Are you noticing the relationship between those two? This and the objectives? They are connected. They are connected. So you can see these are four items. And here we had four items under uh, the independent variables. So I am moving to the very last point, uh, emerging issues. What are the emerging issues right now under research? Some of the challenging issues that we are, we are seeing is uh, that COVID-19 is affecting research so much. 
how we collect data, the kind of researches we are carrying out, how we collect data, how we analyze that data. So researchers, even in the world of business, are seriously thinking about how um, the, the, how, 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 how COVID is affecting uh, business, the business world, uh, how startups are being affected right now. Most parts of the world are really, really being affected. Uh, researchers puzzle and motivation. Please re realize that um, uh, for every research problem, there must be an underlying research puzzle. What is it that puzzles the researcher? so that it motivates the researcher to carry out that study. Now, I want to mention that the situation in Africa is that research is not given weight as a basis for empirical competitive business decision making. That's a problem in Africa. And I wanted to know, what is the situation in Europe? What is the situation in US? In Africa, research is not given a lot of weight. So, uh, you know, you want to start a business, just go ahead and start a business. No researches that are carry, carried out. So, and you want to make a decision, you want to expand your business, you don't base it on empirical, uh, uh, you know, data. Em empirical, uh, when I say the word empirical, empiricism is uh, the idea of making a decision on the basis of evidence data Excuse that you have me. collected and analyzed yes but shouldn't we as the a small business owners for example we should analyze the external and internal factors uh, which can uh, affect our development as the business i didn't get your question very well mm -hmm. i think uh, um, uh, you could uh, take it again yeah uh, uh you told us um about the business that uh, as we should um, trying to uh, expand it we shouldn't uh, go uh, the word you said before uh, I forgot how, it was very hard for me I'm sorry uh, so uh, as I understood it you mean that we should not analyze the data before we expand or what do you mean no what I mean is before you expand you need to analyze data you need to have uh, uh, make a decision based on data. For example, uh, I want to start a business and within that area where I want to establish this business, I want, first of all, I, I need, first of all, to carry out a study to ensure that I understand whether my product is going to make sense within this vicinity, within this market, within this segment of the market. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Every business decision, especially strategic business decisions, not operational decisions, but strategic business decisions should be supported by data. Thank you, thank you. I misunderstood the thing. Thank you for explaining it to me. And, and, and my question is, what is the situation wherever you are? Do businesses carry out researches or studies before making their decisions. What is the situation in the US? What's the situation wherever you are, in Europe or wherever you are? Of course, like, of course, everyone cares about researchers because like the market is too competitive not to uh, care about such things like data and research. Actually, I'd say like about Ukraine, not, not everyone cares about research here. On the contrary, like small business, definitely like yeah, it, very, it, it, very small amount of people in small business care about research. Yeah, uh, I mean, in uh, Ukraine, they're mostly caring about do they have enough money to expand. Yeah, yeah but that's the only research they make, basically. So, it depends uh, on the like on uh, the um, field uh, in yeah, which okay. you're entering and on the size and how um, how many money you invest in. For example, if you just want to start small cafe, you like I think only. 20% of people who start them um, do some research and uh, how many people what's, uh, will go uh, there and like what's, what's their target audience. But if you like just doing small business, no one cares about it. I mean, 
if we talk about America, they kind of have the same situation because uh, no government cares about small business. Of course, it's a big economical influencer. But the thing is that uh, most of the entrepreneurs there they they don't do research before expanding or. For example, you made a restaurant and you want to expand and make two more restaurants. You don't make a research on will people be interested in that area for the same restaurant. You just do it. Um, okay. Then you either fail, either you win. Okay, thank you. Is there any other perspective? I, I realize uh, time is not on my side. I realize uh, we've gone way, way beyond our time. Um, um, I'm really apologetic about that, and uh, but I wanted just to uh, uh, mention. Um, first of all, uh, uh, I'm, I'm giving my appreciation, but I don't know if there is a burning question before I give my final appreciation and before we close uh, the session. Do we have any burning question? Any, yeah. Any yeah, yeah. Can I? Can I? Can I? Like ask a very, very last question. So. I almost understood everything that you wanted to share with us, but can you like help me to make a conclusion? So where we can use this information, for example, I don't know, in uh, daily life or in starting a business or something like that. Okay. Now I'd like to indicate that research is actually applicable in all facets of life, every part of life. Um, I would like for you, to be thinking or to have research engraved at the back of your mind as you walk through your academic journey, as you do everything you want to do. Thinking research, thinking research. Now, uh, for anyone who, uh, I'm sure you'll be doing research methods uh, later on. I'm, I'm, I spoke to uh, Dr. Uh, Protan and uh, she indicated that uh, probably you'll be doing research later on, but I wanted to really engrave research thinking, research thinking. Please note that all the way from right now moving into the future, avoid making strategic decisions without carrying out a research even in a small way. Even in a small way. You want to start business? Think about the kind of information you need to have and what you need to research about. Identify your problem. Try to think through how your business will be part of the solution of that problem. Think through problems. But now remember as a researcher, we think through problems, we think through variables, and we connect those variables through conceptual frameworks. So it's important for you to uh, think about this entire picture as you move on. So, uh, and remember, many people fail not because they do not know what to do, not because they do not have the money to invest, but because they do not have the right information and data. Through proper data collection, through examination analysis, and at the end, reaching the correct conclusions so that you make a decision that is useful. Probably. Yeah, and, uh, dear Dr. Obato, also you went ahead because I also want to say conclusion that uh, our students will have uh, minimum two course paper in the future and so this information will be very important because sometimes our students cannot compare what is the difference between object and so they also don't want, uh, does not know how to work uh, with uh, variables, which you have already explained today. That's why it will be very important in the nearest future. But also in real life, you can live without this information. So thank you for your lecture. Thank you very much for your time, dear Dr. Simon. The students, do you have any more questions? Mm. No, personally, mm. me not. I do have one. And there are people. There are people who are very quiet in the lecture, uh, Madam uh, <laughs> Dr. Protzen. There are people who are very quiet in in my lectures. Usually, I I feel comfortable if more people even say hi hi. You know, just just a feel. <laughs> yeah, I know that's much better when you have in campus lectures. But yeah, maybe in future 
I should yeah. in future reorganize the same lecture, but in Canvas that uh, you can speak with all of them directly and they will be more active. But also, thank you for questions, uh, dear students, and thank you, dear Dr. Obato, for your interesting information. I know exactly that it will be very powerful for our students and the nearest future because uh, next year they will have uh, their course paper in the economics. Then on third uh, year, some of students will have their course paper in international economic relations and management specializations. They will have their course paper at the fourth grade and it will be about uh, management. And of course, you will have a master degree, master, master degree paper, which is called master thesis, when you will be at a master business administration program. And so everything you will mix and uh, now this is just first step for your future scientific work and also professional work. Thank you so much and, and, and before we close everything I would wish to mention probably that uh, as Dean of School of Business at African Nazarene University it will be a good thing uh, to have even further, you know, I don't know, we can have further uh, uh, interactions it would be nice to even have a class where we could even have uh, African Nazarin University students join you and we are together and you will uh, have an experience of how it feels to be in a, in a classroom with, uh, with Africans. Yes. Very <laughs> students who want to join such classes, send please plus at our chat and yes. uh, then this will be also some arrivals. <laughs> yes. And it will give you a feel of how it is also, you know, to interact globally. And um, uh, I'll, be, I'll be happy, very, very happy to open my, my, my school up so that uh, we can even have that interaction from many other angles. You never know. So I think that will be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also great experience. Thank you for ideas. Let's think and we'll be in touch. So, dear students, thank you for your attention. Dear Dr. Obata, thank you for your time. And uh, thank you. it was a very interesting and thank powerful you. presentation. So, see you very soon. Have a nice day and be healthy. Thank, thank you, Mr. Obata. We hope yeah. to see you again. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for yeah. lecture. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.